The Giza Plateau, sacred burial place of many of the kings of Egypt's fourth dynasty, their family members, courtiers and high officials. King Khufu built the first and greatest of the three pyramids here four and a half thousand years ago. He also planned out the great eastern cemetery next to his pyramid, so that his wives, siblings and descendants might be close to him for eternity. Queen Merisank's father was Kawab, eldest son of the king, whose Mastaba tomb is placed very close to the pyramid, and her mother, Heteferes II, was the daughter of King Khufu. My name is Queen Merisank III, and my tomb, unique and splendid, is also located here in the Eastern Cemetery. Unlike the monuments of my relatives, my beautifully decorated offering chapel is actually located partially beneath the ground, under the stone-built tomb itself. Let me show you. The walls of my offering chapel are carved and painted with scenes of the people and objects that I wanted to have with me in the afterlife. The most significant of these people are my parents, my children and my family's faithful steward, who served us for many years, as did his son after him. Queen Merisank's father, Kawab, the king's eldest son of his body and chief lector priest, is the largest painted figure in the tomb, as is befitting a royal prince. He stands dressed in a priestly white sash, behind a scene of her mother, Heteferes, and her sailing on the Nile River, and picking papyrus plants to offer to the great goddess Hathor. Before them, offering bearers carry baskets on their heads of bread, fruit and meat, while others trap birds and herd animals, which will become part of the funerary feast and tomb offerings. My mother and I appear again on the opposite wall, this time standing with my children, including my eldest son, Nebemachet. Like his grandfather, Kawab, he is dressed to reflect his role as chief lector priest. Later in his life, he rose to the highest office in the land, that of vizier, chief administrator of Egypt, and prime minister to the king. It is vital that my tomb be provided with all the different types of statuary, clothing, furniture and other goods that I might need in the next world. All of these things are depicted on my chapel walls, so I am certain to be well supplied forever. Even if the actual objects and offerings placed in my burial chamber are stolen or destroyed over the centuries. My steward, Kemetnu, was also an overseer of the priests who would have been in charge of these offerings. He is shown standing before a false door, a portal through which my spirit could return to this world to enjoy the offerings that would have been placed here. In the northern chamber of the offering chapel is a row of ten statues cut into the living rock of the wall, an uncommon way of decorating tombs at Giza. All these statues represent women, which is exceptional in the male-dominated society of Egypt. Although they are not labelled, they clearly serve to emphasise Merisank's position among her queenly relatives. This emphasis continues in my western chamber, with two more pairs of female statues embracing and holding hands to indicate maternal love and affection. Because the West is the land of the dead, this chamber is the main area for my funerary cult, where select priests would come to present food and drink offerings to my spirit before yet another false door. At certain times of the day, sunlight would shine through a window in the front of my chapel and fall directly on this false door, highlighting its fundamental importance as the center of my cult. 
In the floor in front of it is a shaft over five meters deep leading to my underground burial chamber where my great granite sarcophagus remains. This underground room would have been filled with the sorts of luxurious and costly items that appear painted on the walls of my chapel up above. My mother gave me this black stone sarcophagus, which she originally had made for herself and inscribed with her own name and titles. She had my name carved on it so that it might hold the wooden coffin in which I was buried and protect my body through the ages. Hidden and secure though my burial chamber may be, that is sadly no guarantee that greedy tomb robbers or other unwelcome strangers will not find it and plunder its treasures in the future. After several centuries, Queen Merisang's tomb will be lost to the sands of time. To await rediscovery in 1927, more than 4,000 years later, by archaeologist George Andrew Reisner of the Harvard University Boston Museum of Fine Arts Expedition. Like those who walked this cemetery in ancient times, he will recognize this monument as unique, among the most splendidly decorated, well-preserved Mastaba tombs known.